With the release of Long Distance Revolutionary on DVD and home video, I had this conversation with Mumia, recorded by Eric Sorensen at Street Legal Cinema. Hey, I wanted to say your most recent piece, Don't Worry, Be Happy, is a searing incrimination of America's national security state. We need your voice and others right now as the mainstream media spits out its Pravda-like gibberish. Important piece, man. Thank you. Thank you. I felt kind of the need for it after I've seen a week of, you know, this pole dancing girlfriend and, you know, is he a traitor or a hero, that kind of nonsense. I find this to be quite an impressive young man. I really do. He knows, given, you know, his NSA and CIA background before he got to Booz Allen, Hamilton, he knows, you know, what he can possibly face. And I'm sure he had to really think through those things. And the fact that he's, you know, really tried to enlighten millions of Americans speaks real highly of this young man. I think it is, he's quite an impressive young man, in my view. And obviously very courageous. Incredibly so. And I think that, you know, I saw on CNN about two or three different anchors, right? And they're saying about his latest, I think, web press conference where he said, it doesn't matter if they imprison him or murder him. You know, that stuff will still get out. And every reporter to a man was like, well, is he serious? Does he think, like, the U.S. government would actually, like, murder people? <laughs> it's, it's, it's laughable, right? This is an ex-CIA and NSA employee. My God, you know, the blood is up to the, to the needs, probably, you know? Indeed, they are knee-deep in gore. Hey, back in December, our good friend Chris Hedges and I set up a, uh, a visit, a summit, if you will, between yourself... <laughs> The irrepressible James Cone, the one and only Cornell West, and uh, Chris Hedges himself. And damn it if that didn't happen at SCI Mahane a couple of weeks ago. Talk about your visit, something I think was incredibly historic. Well, I call it uh, laughingly the meeting of the nerds, <laughs> or the conference of the nerds, probably. Each of these men, I've had the pleasure of reading some of their really great, remarkable work. Not all of it, to be sure but enough of it to get a sense, a taste, a deep understanding of what they're putting out into the world and to sit and share with these guys, to really question where the nation is going and through the nation, the empire, and through that, the world. It was sobering. I mean, we had light moments. You can't have light moments without, you know, men of that caliber and me because I'm pretty silly. But it was some grim moments as well. And, you know, Hedges remarked after the fall of Yugoslavia how so many ethnic groups lost touch with reality and began building kind of a false narrative and history, a mythical history that demeaned the other and elevated the self and allowed them to see their former neighbors, their former cousins, the former in-laws and husbands and wives as enemies and how that literally split the state and split that whole region apart. You know, Chris Hedges is a guy that wrote about American fascism and how that is a very real possibility in this country where millions of people enjoy imbibing poison and misinformation as their tri-daily meal. It's it's chilling to kind of talk about those kinds of things, but I think it's foolish if we don't at least give it some real serious thought, especially when you consider that the economic dislocation that hit Yugoslavia because of the greed, you know, of the West to destroy the socialist state. Yeah, we're looking right now at something I think Chris Hedges himself calls the third worldization of the United States, you know, the destruction of schools. The destruction of this the middle from the first correctional institution at Mahanoy and is subject to monitoring and recording. The destruction of the middle class, the joblessness, the foreclosure crisis, and the endless wars. I mean, we have all of the elements of disaster right in front of us. And so we talked about that. It was a wonderful and sobering experience. 
In fact, I, I wrote a blog about the visit and spent some time on liberation theology, something the Central Intelligence Agency has spent decades, as you and I know, trying to extinguish. How important to the spirit of the planet are these three true fighters for justice? I would say this, that all three of them in their own way are liberation theologists. I say that because Chris, of course, is the son of an Episcopal priest, and he aspired to that. He went to seminary until journalism kind of claimed his soul. But his writing does have that flavor in it. James Cone and Cornell West are active liberation theologists in that all of their work is work not just of the polity but of the spirit and of the spirit of freedom that exists in all human beings. That flows through their work. I mean, you know, James Cone says God is black <laughs> because God is, you know, in touch with the most oppressed human community. And Cornel West has been the foremost public intellectual, giving voice to popular resistance in the United States, around the world, against the empire. And he's taken, you know, a lot of flack for that. But his work and his courage has carried him through, and his love of people, you know. He was running around hugging people. That's who he is. Indeed, I can easily see Cornell working that room. <laughs> hey, Moo, even though we're still in theaters, Long Distance Revolutionary was just released on DVD this week, home video. Coming up next, iTunes and Netflix. It's going to be everywhere. A mass audience will finally get the opportunity to see your tragic yet courageous story, minus, of course, the 30 years of lies and fabrications. Tell me a little bit about your thoughts regarding the idea of a wide audience being able to experience your journey. You know, as the Grateful Dead sang, what a long, strange trip it's been. It is still, quite frankly, incredible to me, and a bit of a miracle, I think, that this project that began as a book, as I recall, or a film on a much broader subject, but, you know, I think it had a life of its own that could not be squelched, that could not be stopped. And, you know, by virtue of what's happening as you described today, it continues to have a life. And... I think it will continue to inform and agitate and disrupt those kinds of things that we need now to fight and survive and resist empire. Hey, I know you don't have much time, man. Uh, let's just wrap a little bit about Murder Incorporated. We're like more than halfway through. Can you believe wow. this? That's good to hear. That's impressive. <laughs> I know, um, unbelievable. Let's talk about, let's just talk about a couple of chapters. Uh, how's it going on The Supremes? I know this is right in your wheelhouse, my friend. It is, but it is also, wow. Let me give you just a bite. I'm not going to give you a sandwich. I'm going to give you an hors d'oeuvre, all right? The classic case, I think, in American law, one that sparked a war, was Dred Scott v. Sanford, circa 1857 where the highest court in the land, under Justice Taney, spelled T-A-N-E-Y, said famously, or infamously, depending on your perspective, a Negro has no rights that a white man is bound to respect. Oh, about 20 or so years before that, he wrote an opinion, U.S. v. Rogers. He's writing about Indians, and he essentially says, these people were given their land by the Americans, and before that, the Europeans. They were never regarded as a nation. They were never regarded as sovereign. They were never regarded as a community that, you know, we had to listen to. We civilized them, or words to that effect. It is stunning. Let me finish this parable. If you read Dred Scott v. Sanford, written several years later, he distinguishes the situation that African Americans are facing with that of Indians by saying, the same judge, that they were a self-sustaining, sovereign community. They ran their own affairs. They treated with other countries as any foreign country would. I mean, a complete reversal, because he had to say that they are not like these Negroes, right? And so when you read that kind of stuff, I mean, your mind explodes because you're like, damn, how can he do that? Well, they do what they want to do. And years ago when I wrote about the law, I said the law in America is nothing but white whim. I was being a little facetious, but not by much. Because if you can switch 
logic like that, if you can rewrite history as they've done repeatedly when it comes to black Americans, Native Americans, poor people, workers, you name it, then, you know, what does the law mean? And ultimately, that's the subject of our chapter. The law means power, after all. And it means imperial power. I wrote about the Indians because, yes, they were another nation. You know, when the Europeans first got here and they were very tiny and the Indian nations were very huge, they knew they were nations. But as their power grew and they were able to exploit and dominate and conquer them, well, you know, they've never really controlled anything. We've given them, you know, a civilization. We've tried to educate their poor, unenlightened minds, that kind of stuff. You know, it's just imperialism writ small that the whole world will soon taste to their dismay and to their horror. So I'm just getting started, but the journey will be completed soon. This chapter on the uh, on the CIA, Interventions or Us, continues to grow large. I, I just finished the segment on the execution of one Ernesto Che Guevara at the hands of the CIA in 1967 in the southern hills of Bolivia, another sobering event that helps to define their actions over the last half century. Wow, wow. In fact, the existence of the CIA defines the modus operandi of the empire. Exactly. And this book, Murder Incorporated, calls them out on it, my friend. That's why I love doing it with you. That's why I love you. And I, you, brother, and the pleasure is mine. Thank you. Great hearing your voice. I'll send this chapter, and I'll see you in a couple of weeks for sure. Okie dokie.